Hello, good morning. Now, um, a very brief um, tour of what I've been doing. I've washed my hair this morning, so I'm just drying the towel here by the fire, by the stove. I've got the kettle on the stove. Um, no water at all in the cottage because um, the aquifer just has gone too low and not getting the pressure in the well to pump out the water. Um, let me just grab my tea here and I'll take you over to the tunnel and show you what's been happening. So I've managed to wash some clothes this morning have them out here drying. There's my Joseph coat. A lot of the dyes come out of that, but it's okay, never mind. Right. Mm, now, so we'll go across to the tunnel. I'm going to point the camera down to stop rain getting on the lens. Happy to see the rain. But the reality is that there would need to be an awful lot of rain to bring the um, to bring the water levels in the aquifers back up. So I thought I was doing okay actually in the cottage regarding the water supply, but I was mistaken. Anyway. It's okay, I've got rain water, the rain barrels are filling, so I'm not too vexed about it. And I was able to wash my hair and just have a really good wash as well using rain water. So it's no big deal. Isn't that right, Jack? It's no big deal. We make an awful lot of a big deal out of things, you know, which uh, our ancestors wouldn't have given two figs about. As my grandmother would have said, it wouldn't have turned a hair on their heads. No, I think I've got a bit of water on the screen, so just excuse me whilst I try to clean this. Dry it off. How's that? That's a bit better. Okay. Tunnel life. Hmm. I'm going to sit down with my tea. So, I've been very busy over here. Jack the Clown. <laughs> oh, Jackie boy. Now, wish to wish to because you're a bit wet. So, I've been doing the um, uh, tunnel. I say doing the tunnel because it's a very long process and um, it won't be finished anytime soon. And as you can see, I'm doing it in stages where each stage is completely put in place before I move on to the next bit. And then that prevents me from getting too overwhelmed with the amount of work because um, the work here at Bealtaine Cottage which has always been only ever worked by myself you know the kind of one woman show if I was to sit and think about what has to be done it would be overwhelming and I would lose my um, enthusiasm for it so the way that I've learned to work, the way that I've taught myself is to do work in stages and make sure everything's put into place and then everything's tidied up and packed away. And when I come back to the job, it doesn't overwhelm me. I can see what has been done and I can see what needs to be done and I have a very calm approach to it then because my approach is, is just quite simply okay I'll do whatever I can do today whether it's an hour's work or, or, or six hours work so that way everything um, rolls along quite nicely so as I explained before I have dropped the level of the beds so you can see from here as I'm sitting down so you can see more clearly into the bed. I've taken it down by about <clears throat> six, eight, nine inches 
but I've kept the height at the back because of course that's where the fencing posts are which holds the metal hoops that hold the tunnel up so I don't want to undermine those posts and also that's at the very back of the tunnel which can be difficult to access so I plant little perennials and herbs and whatnot up there and you can also see I've put some pots along there because whatever water I put into those pots will then the excess will run down into the beds so there is a, a reasoning behind everything I do so I've planted purple sprouting broccoli and spinach and kale and these crops should see me through the autumn, the winter, the spring and the early summer. Um, there's lots and lots of pots, so you can see all the pots here. Okay. Now ignore the plastic bags and stuff because that's what people use and reuse here in Ireland. So I had someone bring me up a bag full of uh, actual manure, actual farmyard manure rotted down. Um, in fact I got several bags of it. That's the last one. Um, right, I've been walking around, you know, up and down the gravel drive, around the cottage, and I've been looking down into the gravel because that's where all well most if not all of the really successful self-seeding takes place now the self-seeding is helped along a little bit by myself because when I go out from Beltona on walks if I pick up seeds especially tree seeds where I'm walking in the forest or the woodland um, I then when I'm home, I just scatter all that stuff into the gravel. I don't really, you know, pay too much attention to it. I'll just scatter it into the gravel. Years ago, I would have sown them all very carefully in pots and grown the trees on. But I'm not at that point where I actually need to have more trees. But um, I still want to grow trees because I grow trees and I gift them on. So I've been going around the gravel and I've been surprised. I've, I've taken a lot of little trees and saplings out and um, flowering herbs and whatnot out. I've also got my lovely little tiny, delicate looking little oak saplings that I brought back from London. And... Um, so I've kept the pots fairly close together because I reckon that they actually do better. The plants seem to help each other. They seem to eat, communicate even through pots. So, right, so I'll just take you around some of the pots and I'll show you. So, got some nice ferns. Little beech tree there. There's one of the little oak trees, look. Fever few. Some more beech, another little oak, black currant, some oak, lots of little ferns here. I'm not too sure if that's a Scots pine or not, but um, if it is, I'm delighted. <laughs> I don't keep a record of all the seeds I throw about. Uh, I do think this is a sweet chestnut. Um, lots of ash trees, uh, black currant, cotoneaster, poplar, uh, fever few. Um, there's the first of many of the little budlia which I'll be pulling up. Potted up some pansies there for my little winter display just to brighten up the cottage on the outside. So I've potted those up and um, extended this bed around the honeysuckle. I was telling you about that the other day. So I'm looking forward to some new growth on that. And that's about it really. There's lots and lots of apples happening there. Just 
do a quick quick shot of those. And so on that note, I'm going to finish. Oh, one very important thing. I've got sacks and sacks and sacks of raw wool that a neighbour gives me. So what I do when I'm doing any potting, I take a handful of the raw wool and I put that into the bottom of the pot before I put the compost in and the plant in. Because as the plant's roots grow down, into the pot, searching for food, they come upon this feast, which is fantastic for them. So there we go. On that note, blessings to you all.